Until this Royal Opera House reopened in Mumbai two years back and a hundred years after it was made, many people who visited the city would have wondered why there's a whole area named after it. But walk in here and you won't be surprised. This was pretty much the center of social action, a bit of Europe in the heart of tropical Bombay for the first few decades of its existence. As time passed, the Opera House acted as a venue for meetings, theatre and performances. Mahatma Gandhi addressed a conference here in 1934. Many movies in the 40s and 50s premiered here and India's most famous singer Lata Mangeshkar debuted here. In 1952, the Maharaja of Gonda, Vikram Sinji, bought this place and it continued screening films till the 1990s, when it was finally shut down due to the losses it made. The Royal Opera House was pushed out of public memory until it was brought back from the brink in 2016. So I caught up with Asad Lalji, the man now in charge of getting the Opera House back on its feet to talk of what went into the revival of the Opera House and the plans for its comeback. You know, the Opera House, uh, the Royal Opera House Mumbai is India's only surviving Opera House. And the beauty of this place is it's a privately owned, uh, beautiful building that was conceived in 1908. Uh, by uh, and uh, a businessman by the name of Maurice Brandman and uh, a Parsi gentleman by the name of uh, Jahangir Framji Kalaka. And you know, they, they decided to open an opera house and which was wonderful and it took them and you know, I think in, in 1911, King George V mm. visited India and he inaugurated the opera house. And at that point in time, it wasn't ready. So they did whatever they could to, you know, put carpets over the floor. So it was camouflaged and, well, you told me. Yeah, it was camouflaged well and they opened it and it was finally completed in 1916. Viewers who, who are not familiar with Mumbai, right. it was very significant even for, for Indian movies, I mean, right. uh, a lot of premieres happened here, right? And also the gharana. See, a lot of the music gharanas happened, you know, on the road parallel to it. And it was a hub, and a lot of the artists started living around here. So it was a factor of this? It's a location, right? Because there was nothing else around here hmm. at that point of time. And I think location also, you know, there is some theory of, of these old movie, you know, obviously performing arts spaces or movie theatres and their success is to do with the public transport system. You see these, um, if you plot it against a map of the subway, the, sorry, the train stations, you find theatres there for accessibility because that's how it became popular. Um, but that said, um, yep, yep, I see, you know, after the renovation and the restoration, um, I feel there has been another spurt of um, revitalizing the neighborhood. There are new restaurants popping up. Um, people are finally realizing Opera House is not a neighborhood, it's actually a place. We, we'll talk about uh, uh, the relevance of an Opera House and, and the challenges uh, therein to make it relevant to a young audience. But I want to get back to the restoration piece. You know, I, I know you do a tour of, of, of this and we're getting a sneak peek into that tour. So tell, tell me the four or five standouts for you as somebody who's seen this place you know, evolve from a rundown piece where it was restored and it's back on its feet. What are the things that stand out for you? My favorite is, uh, personal favorite, is, is the, the, the foyer upstairs, which I took you to earlier with the original Minton tiles. I, I call it my Faluknama. Basically, I'm, I'm trying to have a sit down dinner there one point of time. It's not happened yet, but that's my favorite, favorite spot. And the view you get from there, you know, as you grow up. Um, it's, it's also quite magical to be on stage and just see because it's such an intimate opera house. You know, it's, it's so compact and, and it's also designed like, I mean, we've had so many international uh, performing artists come and tell us it's like performing in any opera house anywhere in Europe, a small opera house. So tell us about the chandeliers, you know, the poets and the, and the great artists so, who are represented here. I mean, it, there's a lot of imagery that goes into creating the feel of an opera house. So, uh, some of the chandeliers obviously uh, by, come from the royal family's personal collection, uh, most of them actually. And so two of these were actually from the David Sassoon's house the, uh, at Masina, the, now the Masina Hospital. Uh, the paintings, as I was mentioned, were meticulously restored and some of them were done by Anupam Sa, some of them by other, other conservation artists. And in fact, if you see some of the, the, con uh, the old archival pictures, that Abba and her team had managed to get. Uh, you see how they were, and that's based on these archive 
archival pictures and footage that they created, they've actually recreated a lot of the original grandeur and beauty that was there. The Opera House has come a long way from being on the endangered buildings list in Mumbai to winning accolades for its restoration, brilliantly done by conservation architect Abha Narayan Lamba. But now that's done, Asad, a former ad man, has a task of making this venue come alive in a new India. I always believe that this is this place should be democratic. I mean, you know, it shouldn't be looked at elite, though it's a very regal and royal building, it shouldn't be looked at being an elitist space. You have to bring people in and to bring different stakeholders and different target audiences in. You have to give them what they're looking for. And we've been very fortunate because, you know, the city has kind of welcomed us and, you know, embraced us in a way where, you know, we are we're very sought after as a venue. We're very lucky. My curatorial vision was to be a multi-pronged approach. So I, I support literature, whether we do curtain raises for literature festivals, support um, book events um, in various formats. Uh, we're going to be doing a children's literature festival in December. Um, within the, the theatre world, we have all the, the practitioners from the theatre business um, on, on our stage practically. And uh, we've, we've tried to make it um, uh, an ecosystem that kind of supports them also. From the performing arts world, we've had um, uh, the music world, we've had lots of... Uh, you know, we've done fun things like we just presented a, a, a collaborative orchestra called Fantasy Orchestra. We have lots of, we have a visually impaired um, orchestra coming in to perform uh, in September. So it's, it's a very varied, though we have our whole opera, we've had Indian classical music, Western classical music. Um, we've even had a fashion show here. I mean, you know. Um, so, so, so you really t turn the concept of an opera house in a classical sense on its head. Now, I'm going to ask you, you know, opera is a new concept in India. Sure. It was in the initial avatar, a very elite concept in India, right? I mean, it, sure. only a few had access to it. And yet in India, you have a parallel narrative of, of the great musicals that Bollywood went on to exemplify, mm -hmm. the theater, the regional theater. And Mumbai was, and Bombay was a, a hub of those things. Right. Uh, do the twines meet over here in the new avatar, do you think? You know, it does. We have commercial music productions happening here we have plays which bring that music in see from an opera standpoint it is a niche it is a niche market a niche audience and a very niche subject and what we've tried to do is kind of educate people about opera because that's not part of our common vocabulary we didn't grow up with opera mm. around us you know mm. so um, um, we actually have done an opera appreciation work I mean opera 101 and opera 2.2 and to launch our opera season 2018 we're actually doing an opera appreciation workshop so you know basically you have to educate uh, people uh, and build that appetite and this is what we're trying to do. Um, we were very fortunate to present the first opera of the season, uh, first, first full opera last year which was um, with the Giving Voice Society um, and it was uh, you know a full Indian uh, or Indian origin cast, Which is fabulous. Which I, is I've fabulous. seen yeah. the, uh, the, the, the video of that yeah. and it's amazing to see that kind of talent in India yeah. you know yeah. it's, because you, you'd never get exposed to something like right. that otherwise. Also the part of what I like doing is this is a give people a platform a stage everyone has to start somewhere mm. and some of the you know the underdogs I mean you know you have to give them that opportunity it just shouldn't be like you know once you reach a certain level you come to the opera you know also we've created this um, a very warm and collaborative working style and place which is what we've inculcated even from the way we charge people we just make it um, uh, make it accessible. accessible to people to come here and make them want to come back again and again. I mean, that's yeah. the idea. So, so you know, space. in the global uh, context, mm -hmm. uh, the world of opera and o great opera houses like this, uh, the, the, the issue they're grappling is, you know, dealing with a new era of right. Netflix <laughs> addicted binge watching viewers and, you know, who have such great access to different media mm -hmm. and different kind of platforms. So there's a lot of thinking that's happening in the international circles where they're using multimedia, they're using different techniques of storytelling for the opera. How much of that is happening in India, you think? Well, I think, um, um, firstly, we can't really compare ourselves to the West because, you know, their, their art forms are backed by so much patronage as far as money goes. We are um, a little far behind, actually, in that. But as far as, uh, you know, relevance, see, opera is an art form. Now, you can contemporize it, you can make it accessible, you can use 
digital you, you, social media for pushing it out and building an appetite. But the idea of opera is unless you're sitting in here and experiencing it for yourself, you can't. I mean, screenings of an opera are lovely. People do it. Then you could sit in your drawing room and you can watch it on your YouTube. You don't have to come. But the, the, the actual um, experience. Uh, experience, you have to live it. You have to be experience it, which happens. And, you know, imagine walking into a place like this uh, and actually experiencing. So we have a lot of fun with that also. I mean, last year we did it. This year we're having a fashion pop-up to go with the opera. Mm. Just to kind of bring some, you know, uh, another level of, uh, uh, of uh, association or, you know, touch, uh, touch and feel points to the opera. Because... There is no, there's no job description here. There's no right or wrong. I mean, you are creating a new category. Innovation is the buzzword to make the curtain stay up at the Royal Opera House. And it has already come a long way, allowing visitors today a window into a whole chapter of Mumbai's cultural history.